guys, I told you I would answer the eternal sonship issue years ago. <clears throat> I got accused of denying the eternal sonship of Christ. And I got very confused because I hadn't really even considered it. Um, I was actually pretty much just preaching the gospel um, and, you know, fighting for a blessed assurance. And I had made a statement like uh, uh, confirming Jesus's eternality, his preexistence, and that he is divine, that he is God manifest in the flesh. So I was confused, like, why would they say I don't say he's eternal son? But then I realized this is a debate that's gone on for a while um, um, where some believe that Jesus, as God, uh, has always been subservient or less than or subordinate to the Father. Um, and then there's others that believe he only, and he's always been the Son. And then there's others on the other camp that believe he was the Word, and then the Word manifested and became flesh he became God in the flesh, and then he was the Son of God. But that in eternity, he was not subservient. And if he did hold a subordinate position, it was out of choice. It was not because he was inferior to the Father. And so I find myself having to look at this. Now, I found some uh, verses in the Old Testament. One is with Radchak, Meshach, and Abednego when they're thrown in the furnace. And they say one like the Son of God is walking around in there with them. But that word is Benai Elohim, and it was often used to uh, mean angelic being. So it could mean the Son, capital S, or a Son of God. And some translations put Son of the Gods. Uh, so I looked at all the evidence there, and I would like to say, as long as you realize that Jesus is eternal, that he's God himself, that he manifested in the flesh, that he died for your sins, was buried and rose again on the third day, and because of that you have eternal life, I consider your brother or sister in Christ. Uh, you don't have to agree with me on this. I myself, now that I've studied it, have found that I do not believe that Jesus uh, has always been subordinate or below or inferior to God the Father, because God is God. He can't be less or more God. He is. Uh, and my friend was saying, you know, uh, eternal sonship is actually an oxymoron, because to say someone is a son implies that the Father existed first, and that the Son is a derivative of him. And so that he didn't exist until after the Father. And if that's the case, then I have to say, yes, I deny that Jesus is less than the Father. I deny that he's subservient or inferior or less power than the Father. So, yes, in that sense, I do deny it. I am of the belief, now that I've looked at scripture on this, that he is the word. He was the word in heaven with the father and that he manifested in the flesh. And as Psalm 2, let me, I'll give you the verse. Okay. And I believe that he became the son. I believe he became the son uh, once he came in the form of a man, just like Jesus was not always the son of man until he was begotten in the flesh. Then he was the son of man. So I believe Jesus was God and is God and has always been God. I think his subordinate position of being under the Father was by choice and not because he's less than or inferior to the Father's. Like, I don't believe there's this part of the Godhead is more powerful than that part of the Godhead. And when Jesus says, my Father is greater than all and he is greater than me, I believe he's speaking from his subordinate position in the flesh there. So Psalms 2, 7, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. So this day have I begotten thee as my son. See, uh, there are some that believe he's always been the son, but that implies that at some point he didn't exist with the father.
Uh, so eternal sonship doesn't really make sense unless somehow you can make it. It just doesn't work because a son, uh, a father precedes a son. So uh, to me, I believe that John explains it. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And it tells us that Jesus created all things. So uh, I I don't I think any subordinate position he took was out of out of choice and not because he was inferior to the Father. Again, the Lord has said unto me, "Thou art my Son. This day have I begotten thee." So that is a prophecy of Jesus God being born in the flesh. Let's look at Luke one thirty five. Again, if you disagree, that's fine. It doesn't matter which side of the camp you're on on this. As long as you know he's eternal and he's God and he pre-existed, that, that's fine. I, I don't know why people feel that you must agree with them and that they're so dogmatic that their doctrine's right. But it's really arrogant to say that because you can come to either conclusion through the scriptures. You can come to either conclusion and neither one can be confirmed as right or wrong. So I think it's wrong to say dogmatic and say, I'm right and you're wrong on this. And you're a heretic if you don't agree with me. I just, I, I don't know where you're going to find anybody that agrees with you on all these issues. These issues were debated for centuries. And if people couldn't talk to each other and just throw each other out as heretics, nothing would have ever gotten done. Luke 135, and the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Do you see there? So to me, these verses are saying that he was the word, he was God himself, and that he manifested in the flesh, and then he was the Son, because then he has the humanity of Jesus has a beginning then it makes sense to me. But that's my opinion, okay? I see that he's referenced, there's Christophanies all through the Old Testament. Jesus sat down and ate with Abraham with the two angels on his way to Sodom and Gomorrah. Jacob wrestled with him. I believe that was all Jesus manifesting in the flesh before his incarnation. So I don't believe he was the son until his incarnation. I believe he was God, and God is not less or more God. He just is God. So I don't believe he's inferior to the father. I think his subordinate position was by choice, not because he's less than. Okay. And I think it's wrong to call somebody a heretic just because they don't believe he's always been inferior to the father or subordinate to the father. I don't think that's right. I think there's evidence here that makes sense why I could make a scriptural decision the way that I have. And these things have been discussed for centuries. I don't think it's right that anybody gets that dogmatic. So uh, it says, therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So we go over here to Romans. It says Romans 1, 4, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Declared to be the Son of God. Let's go over to John. I'm just showing you why I came to this conclusion. Since I was accused of this a couple years ago, but didn't even know what they were talking about, I looked into it. It was like, I do not deny the eternal sonship. What are they talking about? I'm always talking about Jesus is eternal. But now I know what they're talking about. And so now I do. Now you can accuse me with all the ammunition right here. Okay? You can call me a heretic because I'm giving you all the ammunition you need. John 17, 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So we see Jesus was with the Father, and he had glory with the Father before the world was. So I do not believe Jesus was less than or inferior or uh, existed any time after the Father. I believe he's always existed with the Father. Uh, John 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. 
the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. That's Jesus. He created all things. He was with God, and he was God. And he was the word, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so I have three verses here. It says, this day have I begotten. Yeah, I believe that's when, just like he was the son of man when he was begotten in the flesh, when he came manifested in the flesh, that Jesus' humanity had a beginning. I believe that's when his sonship had a beginning because he manifested in the flesh. Now he was begotten of the father as the son. So that is my opinion, and it has sound scriptural basis for that. I'm showing you. If you disagree, that's okay. You do not have to agree with me on this. I just don't believe that he was subordinate or inferior to the Father in all of eternity. Eternal and sonship doesn't make sense because that means a father must precede a son. 1 Timothy 3.16 and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. The mystery of godliness is that God manifested in the flesh, just like the mystery of iniquity is Satan manifesting in the flesh through the Antichrist. Okay, we see that in Revelation, I believe, or Daniel. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. So again, I will state my belief on this, my opinion. Now that I've been accused of it, I went ahead and looked at it. Um, and again, this has been debated for centuries. Either conclusion you come to is fine with me. As long as you know Jesus is eternal, he's God almighty, he preexisted, he manifested in the flesh, as God in the flesh, the son of the living God, who died for your sins, was buried and rose again on the third day. Because of that, you have eternal life, savior of the world. I'm fine with it. You're my brother or sister in Christ. I hope that we can show each other some liberty and some charity on issues we disagree with, uh, because these are not foundational issues we must agree on. You can see why I came to my conclusion, and it doesn't limit Jesus at all. As a matter of fact, I'm saying he was not inferior to the Father uh, in all of eternity. That he is God and has always been God. And I don't know how you're less God in eternity. So I believe that he was the Word. And when he manifested in the flesh, he was the Son of God. So uh, that's my official position on it. Uh, hopefully I clarified it, whatever your position is. I'm fine with it. All right. God bless.